Welcome back, Brick Maniacs. I'm here with Dan Siskin. We are standing behind the completed now USS O'Hare. How's it feel to be done with this bad boy? It's great. Yeah. Want to pack it up, get it out of here, work on the next one. <laughs> well, it's such a beautiful setup here we got going on right now. I mean, tell me a little bit about uh, just kind of the process. I know this was kind of one that everybody got to help out with a little right. bit more, which was kind of fun. But uh, yeah, walk me through it. So, so this is, in the past, the big mega ships I've done myself taken months and months and months. I wanted to streamline that process. We want to make more than one of these uh, builds a year and uh, had some help. We got some digital printouts, did, did some digital modeling. Able, we were able to make some plans that everybody was able to follow. Other people handed off to other people. So we had about four or five builders build the hull, got the hull done in about a week's time, um, built all the, the, the equipment on the surface, a um, little bit at a time. So uh, I did the final putting everything together and it was real easy because I had all the, the guns, the turrets, everything was pretty much ready to go. Um, people helped out with the, the minifigures. And it was just, you know, having a group of people, obviously the more hands, the quicker your, your job's gonna go, so. Being able to streamline a large build like this, this was the first time you really kind of attempted to get more people involved, yeah. right? So about a dozen people worked on this okay. over the course. We, we spent about a month um, doing it, but it wasn't like we spent all month doing it. We we got the whole done in a week. Had to set it aside while we you know got the next got ready for the next phase. So the deck went on, then the deck houses, and then you know was able to take all in the meantime, get it endless help building all the, the equipment that goes on, on on top. So obviously the destroyer people know of if they haven't seen this yet is the Nicholas. Compared to that, how do these two kind of relate and just kind of build style in the sections and all that? The Nicholas wasn't very strong. We moved the first time we moved it across the country. We destroyed it on the way to the show. Oh, no, uh, we were able to rebuild it from the pieces and get it on display. But it was a it was a pretty har harrowing experience built rebuilding it in a vehicle, moving driving across the country. Um, the first one I built um, in three sections. Wanted to make sure it fit through doors, could fit in vehicles. And um, we learned that three sections maybe was not a good idea. Four sections would be better. The smaller sections, the better. Um, it actually packs up better in four sections. Now this thing, you could pick up sections, no problem. Okay. It, it's very durable. Um, went from the Nicholas was the first one, and that was actually a warm up for the USS Missouri, mm -hmm. which is the, the, the previous big build. And the Missouri is very sturdy, uh, and all the lessons we learned in building those two ships went into this. So uh, very, very sturdy sections. We can pick up any section, pretty much toss it up in the air. And, 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 and it's, you know, I've stood on top of this ship as right. we were building That's, it. That was going to be my next question, because yeah. I've seen you stand on the Missouri, too. <laughs> yeah, I, and I stood on this. You can stand here. You can stand back there. The whole thing is sturdy enough. There's. There's not a place that I wouldn't feel comfortable, except all the stuff on top would have to be moved because otherwise it'd just get crushed. But um, it's 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 very you know every every component um, is very sturdy. It's not going to come apart very easy. So in 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 World War II, the U.S. Navy built these. They're called flush deck destroyers because it's one continuous deck down mm -hmm. the whole length of it. So the 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 USS Nicholas is a Fletcher class destroyer, which is earlier on in the the you know when de development of World War II destroyers, okay, and it's kind of like the same thing that we did. That was that was what came first. Then the this is a um, uh, uh, gearing class. Sorry, losing okay. it, losing. There's too so much, too much, too many things in my head. Been sitting here for a yeah, while. yeah. So this is a gearing <laughs> class. This is like a, a continuation. So that the Fletcher, then the Allen M Sumner class, and then this is the final iteration of the World War II destroyer. You want to walk me through this armament real quick here and sure. some of the little details. So the purpose of a destroyer is to be escort of the bigger ships, the like capital ships, mm -hmm. like a, a battleship or aircraft carrier. Um, it's to provide su uh, uh, a supplemental offensive. Um, Armament, so it would have like say this has this is a, a five tube torpedo bank. Um, torpedoes can be fired at any size ships. Um, its main armament actually are these dual purpose five inch guns. So there's two three turrets. Each turret has two guns. These are these are uh, uh, 35, 35 caliber five inch guns. Thirty five calibers means it's thirty five or thirty eight caliber. I'm sorry, thirty eight times the barrel length is thirty eight times the the five inch bore okay. uh, of the gun. Um, they can be used as fire uh, targets on shore, other ships, and of course uh, used against uh, aircraft. So that's the main armament. So we have six of these five inch guns in three turrets. Mm -hmm. We have these torpedoes. Um, the gearing class originally had two sets of these. So back here there would have been another set of torpedo tubes. Mm -hmm. um, during World War II, uh, it became apparent that the biggest threat was aircraft. And especially in 1944 when the Japanese resorted to kamikaze tactics. Right. These ships weren't necessarily the targets, but these ships could escort the larger ships uh, and they could just put up a wall of anti-aircraft fire. So these are 40 millimeter cannons, Bofors 40 millimeter cannons. Um, they're basically gigantic machine guns. Mm -hmm. They will fire 
these 40 millimeter shells as fast as you could load them in. So wow. they put them in banks of four. Originally, the, the gearing class had two uh, quad uh, mounts. They added this third quad, and they also have twin 40s up here. So quite a quite a um, anti-aircraft screen, very powerful in that regard. And they also have these 20 millimeter cannons. If you've seen the Missouri, they have singles, and the and the Nicholas, which is a Fl early Fletcher class, had a single 20 millimeter cannons. They actually doubled those up. That's sort of like last ditch. If somebody gets close enough to shoot with that, you're pretty much in trouble. <laughs> in fact, they did determine sort of later in the war that they weren't, you know, while they could shoot down an airplane, mm -hmm. if somebody's flying directly at you, a 20 millimeter shell isn't going to do a whole lot. So, you. you you know, you could bring down an airplane with it, but it, the pieces are still going to hit you. Sure. <laughs> so compared to the Nicholas, similar crew count? Very similar. This has a lot of anti-aircraft, extra guys on here just to man all the anti-aircraft. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's basically the same, the same hull as the, uh, the, the uh, Nicholas. Mm -hmm. They stretched it out uh, 14 feet to put more fuel capacity in it. The Pacific Ocean is massive. And in order for these ships to get across the Pacific Ocean, they could do it from, like, say, San Francisco, but they'd have to be refueled along the way. And a lot of times, you, you can only go as far as your fuel supply. So, right. And the fuel, the fueling ships, you generally are slower, and you you, know, you have to disengage from whatever you're doing, patrol, combat, to go refuel, um, or else they would pull up alongside of an aircraft carrier. Aircraft carrier would supply fuel because you know the battleships and aircraft carriers were. were they're huge by mm -hmm. comparison. They could, they could supply their, their escort ships with fuel, but it's not an efficient way to do battle. So better, better just give it bigger fuel bunkers to begin with. Do you want to touch on these uh, depth charges back here? Because so, well, this all looks pretty sweet. Right. So the, uh, another role of the destroyer is, is anti-submarine uh, warfare. They have sonar. I mean, they're, they're scanning the horizon with radar, with sonar, with their, their glasses, looking for periscopes. Looking, you know, if they're lucky, they'll find a, a submarine on the surface. Mm -hmm. Then they yeah, can like engage it with the guns. <laughs> yeah. um, they can engage it with guns, but once a submarine dives, the, the submarine's chief uh, defense is stealth. Mm -hmm. It goes under the waves. Um, these ships are equipped with sonar, so they can, you know, it's rudim very rudimentary sonar, but they can hunt submarines. Um, usually they'll just take a bearing on it, and they will run over the place that the submarine was last sighted and either roll depth charges off the back or these on the side here, they're called K-guns. They're basically depth charge projectors. Uses compressed air to shoot the depth charge. Cool. So you can shoot six at a time in a pattern off the side, and you better move along because that depth charge is actually, they are preset to explode at a certain depth. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to be sitting over that when that thing explodes. That's two to 300 pounds of, of uh, TNT. Popping up behind you. Right, you don't want to be in the water. So you, <laughs> um, there is, you know, these submarines, usually the depth charges are armed all the time. If, 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 if one of these ships actually goes down, mm -hmm. it will go down with all of its depth charges with it. You better swim away as no, fast as you kidding. can because you don't want to be over that area and all, they all explode at once. Very cool. Anything else you want to touch on? Sure, I'll keep talking. Yeah, if, you, if you want to, man, go for it. <laughs> so this ship is destined to go into our, our, our uh, Schaumburg store in yep. Illinois. Um, we're hoping to do kind of a big opening event that we would we'll bring the ship, we'll, we'll unveil it, it'll be a permanent fixture mm -hmm. um, in the store, and we'll do some sort of uh, uh, homage to uh, Edward O'Hare at that time of the store opening, because this is actually named after Butch O'Hare. He was a World War II uh, naval pilot, uh, you know, in all sense of the words, a hero. He, 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 he died doing what he, was, what he loved doing, he, um, in defending, uh, using his, you know, developing tactics against uh, enemy air attacks and then also actually putting that into action, helping to save his carrier air group, or his carrier uh, in combat. Very cool. Well, you heard it here. This is the uh, Brickmania's newest large build. Um, this is going to be the centerpiece of the new store in Schaumburg, so make sure to keep an eye open for that. Dan, thanks for walking me through this. This is pretty cool. Yeah. Sweet. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Stay tuned for more content.